grace and his mercy. Yes.
place of rejoicing where we know the saints of God are. And I truly thank God to be in the house of the Lord because if I was at a family function or party, you know, I would love to be here. But I love to be now in the house of the Lord. I thank God for giving me a new mind and a new desire to walk, to please him and to truly please him and to not be a hypocrite. Um, not just with on the outwardly, but inwardly as well, to have a mind to truly strive to walk upon this holy highway. So pray for us um, and sing a song. I can depend on God. I can depend on God. I can depend on
But always remember, it's the will of God. Whatever happens, you can strike back. Saints, I want to encourage you tonight. Spike. I want to encourage you tonight. Just a, just a, a few scriptures in Jesus Christ's name. Just to encourage us as we walk our holy walk in Jesus Christ's name. Because through our holy walk, we know that there's much trial, much tribulation that we all must go through, saints. And we have to learn to still yet keep our head up, still yet look to the Lord. Because he's the author and the, he's the finisher of all of our faith. You know, if it wasn't for, you know, God, where would any of us be? So God allows us to be able to go through things, saints. You know, he's the one who gives us strength. He's the one who helps us in a time of need. Sister Jeremy, what was that song you were singing? If you heard it. I had a thought on that song when you were singing. I just forgot it. Um, if, uh, if everybody loved Jesus, yes. what a wonderful world yes. this would be. Exactly. I didn't know all of them, but I just remember well, hearing it hey, all the time. Right, so, Mother Hunt and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. But I thank God because, you know, if everybody loved Jesus, we wouldn't need no lawyer. We wouldn't need no police officer. You know, those that are in that field, they have to find another career. Right. If every if everybody loved Jesus. Yeah. But you know, we're living in a time now to where Satan is here also. Mm -hmm. So by Satan being here, saints, you know, that's why we have so much wickedness that's in the land. Yeah. But you know, I thank God for you know being able to look through the scriptures. It started up in heaven. Yeah. But it was, he was kicked out of heaven. So now he's down here in the earth, roaming about. You know, so we have to contend with him, you know, daily. Why? Because he's here. He's trying to gather all of all of us. He don't want nobody to go back with the Lord. So, but if everybody loved Jesus, he'd still help us. Even though Satan is here. You know, he's here to try to, he's here to, he's here to knock us off our course. We all, you know, some of us have not even started for the Lord's course, but those that have started, we know that we have, you know, great trials and great tribulation that we all have to go through, mm -hmm. simply because of Satan. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Satan, just like that song she was saying, if everybody loved Jesus, Satan wouldn't be here to buffer us. Satan wouldn't be here to try us, but he's here. And because he's here, we have to go to God and ask God for more power. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Those that don't have the Holy Ghost, continue to seek God for the Holy Ghost. Just like he told them back in the days, he said, go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with own power. Mm -hmm. Still yet, tarry for the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Ask God for the Holy Ghost. Seek God for the Holy Ghost more than you seek God for your, our natural food. Because the Holy Ghost is very much needful, saying. Mm -hmm. Those that don't have it, ask God for it. He promised it to you. He'll give it to you. He's waiting on you. You have witnesses that's ever more before you. It's still in the land today. Some churches don't believe that you have to speak in tongues. But we believe that because it's Bible. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you automatically speak with the tongue. So don't ask God for the tongues. Ask God for the Holy Ghost. The tongue's going to come automatically. So seek God for that spirit in Jesus Christ's name. By way of scripture, I want to call your attention to the fourth chapter of Sometimes we, as the Bible said, we are compassionate about with so great a cloud of witness. Because no matter what we're going through in, in life, there's always someone that has gone through these things before we have been, even been tried. In other words, there's always someone that, that we can look up to. There's an example some, somewhere. And sometimes, by us going through our trials and tribulations, we can be an example for those that are looking up. Because sometimes they'll look at us. And they need strength. So saints, that's why it's important to go through your trial, go through your tribulation, whatever, whatever you're being tried with. Ask God to help all of us. Pray for your sister, pray for your brother. Because sometimes we're, you know, we're all being you know, tried. And sometimes, some trials are, 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 are very hard on various ones. That's why we got with your prayer, they're able to go through. And all of us, if we all will look to the Lord, God is able to bring all of us through. So we have to pray one for another in Jesus Christ's name. By way of scripture, fourth chapter of Matthew, we will begin reading at verse 1. 
Because our Lord and Savior, he was tried. Who was he tried by? Satan. Satan also. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And say, if Jesus was tried, how about you? How about you? In other words, we all have to, we have, you know, we all have to go through. He was our perfect example. Little children, older, older, older saints. Satan is, Satan is still here. Those that are in between, he's still here. Just like he tried Jesus back in the day, he'll try us even today. He's not, he's not finished with his work. But we have to be on our job just like he's on his job. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward at home. Just because you fast, just because you pray, don't mean that Satan is going to leave, up, leave us alone. But we can gain more power, Satan. Don't leave off fasting. Don't leave off prayer. But Satan is going to still yet try it. But even though he tries, us, let us strive to overcome him. Satan is going to, you know, there are so many different trials and tribulations. There are so many different temp temptations that he will bring our way. You know, everybody's not tempted the same. Every, everybody can't bear what one another, what, in other words, everybody cannot bear what another one may be able to bear. In other words, it may be grievous for one to bear, well, for another one, hey, it, it may be simple to them. Such as in life, sometimes we look at people that smoke. Because we're not smoking, we're like, oh, y'all put them cigarettes down. Y'all let one little six-inch little thing control y'all. But that's because they, are, they haven't overcome that. But for us, because we've never, some of us have never tried cigarettes, none of us was never addicted to cigarettes, we can easily say to them, ah, oh, y'all let that little thing handle y'all. But then here, here comes food. And food overtakes us sometimes. You know, one, one, one temptation, one may can bear. The other temptation, they cannot bear. But saints, we still have to look to the Lord. I mean, there are so many, very, there are so many different temptations out there. So many. Women, men, you know, money. You know, you know the spiritual part, that's the Satan. But Satan, you know, in order for him to tempt us, he has to use something tangible or someone. You know, all we have to do is be able to keep our spiritual eye, recognize these things, and ask God to give us strength to overcome these things. You know, the Bible tells us to watch and pray. Some temptation comes, but we're not watchful. Some temptation comes, and we're watchful, but we're not praying. We have to watch and pray to be able to overcome things. Ask, you know, ask God for strength. All of us, pray for one another. Pray for our children because they need the same. You know, we have went to school. We know what it's like to be in school. But some of them, you know, now they're going through what we used to have to go through. But even today, certain things are more trying to them. So we have to pray for them. That spirit is yet learning. It's been around. And it, it, it ain't going away until God get ready to stop the world. So in other words, God has a set time for those things. But until that time comes, we're going to be tried. We're going to be tempted. Just like our Lord and Savior was tempted. But he overcame Satan. How about us? In order for us to overcome, we have to stay in the Word. Stay spiritual. Just because you fast and pray, don't stop Satan from coming your way. My fact, Satan will get us a lot of times when we are fasting and because a lot of times when we're fasting and prayer, we are in the, in the natural, we're more weak. But the spiritual, we're more strong. I'm not saying don't fast and don't pray because, by, you know, in other words, you gain strength. So to gain strength, keep on fasting, keep on praying. But be watch. Don't just fast and pray and go to sleep. You know, be watch. Verse 2 again. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward at home, 
Sometimes out of our fasting, we know that the natural food, when we're going on a spiritual fast, that natural food is acceptable to us. In other words, it, 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 we can smell it, our, 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 our nose needs to be more keen. We can smell these things. You know, as they say, something about a mile away. But that's because we're hungry. In other words, we're doing something spiritual, but the natural food is, is yet, you know, our body is yet craving for those things. You know, the apple pie, the candy, the, you know, the cake, whatever, the drinks. You know, a lot of times when I'm out working so hard, you know, honestly, it's hard for me to fast. But don't, you know, at the same time, I don't want to make no excuse to the point that I'm not going to fast because at the same time, you know, I got I got a temper that, that wants to be saved too. So in other words, I still have to learn to fast even out of my hard work sometimes. So y'all pray for me. In other words, I don't have one of these sit down jobs at the desk or where I can go in. I'm out in the, in the sun, and it's, it, as they say, I'm losing a lot of energy. But at the same time, I still want to have a spiritual mind. I can't let that be no excuse. Just like you all can, you know, sit in the office or sit wherever, you know, have a, you know, driver jobs or whatever. You're still gonna be tempted. That's Satan's job. That's Satan's job. Verse three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread." And sometimes you look at why we didn't want, you know, in other words, he knew what Jesus needed or wanted, so to speak. I want to say needed. In other words, he was out the food because he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Not just 40 days, not just 40 nights, but 40 days and 40 nights. So he was most certainly home. So the first thing Satan tried to tempt him with is food. And sometimes while we've been on fast, sometimes people say to you some value to bring food to us to knock us off our course. But our course is to fast and pray to God. But Satan will come. Here comes someone who, hey, they just will bring you something out of the blue. But you have to recognize these things. In other words, I ain't nothing but a trick of Satan to try to knock me off this course. If I say I want to go to 12 o'clock, if I say I want to go to 6 o'clock, here it is, you know, 1 o'clock, they bring me something, trying to knock me off my court. <coughs> but Satan, we have to recognize those things. That's just another tactic of Satan. Yeah. Are we wise enough to see these things? Oh, they, oh, oh they, they, they just want me to have something to eat. Yeah, before you know it, you know, both get fat. But Satan brought this, he, 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 asked, he, asked, he asked Jesus, and I told you this one. He says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made free. Jesus knew who he was. Satan knew who Jesus was. But he wanted, he wanted to try Jesus. Remember, it said, the tempter came to him. The tempter come to us also. Will we withstand him? Will we fall down and do what he said? Sometimes we we have not always, you know, we have not always overcame Satan because sometimes Satan came and we failed. Sometimes he can bring, you know, we can be on the fast and somebody, you want a piece of gum? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just got you just that quick. A peanut, a piece of candy, any little thing. They can break it just like that. Sometimes we have to do that. All right, you got me that time. Go back on it again. In other words, don't just stop because he got you that one time. God is still there. God still needs us or wants us to look to him. Verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Satan Ask him, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Bread helps man to live. Jesus replied, man shall not live by bread alone. Bread helps us to live, saints, but bread is not the only thing that allows us to live. The Word of God is what helps us live also. Which one is more important? The Word of God. God can keep us even if we don't eat. Because God is God. 
Do we have faith in God to where we can withstand those things when Satan comes? When you're on your fast, stay on your fast. You know, I broke fast, but at the same time, there's some time I've set up fast and I, I, I went beyond the time that I even said I was going to fast. Simply because your mind and your heart is more focused. Sometimes I, I desire to, as they say, like Michael say, shut, shut out everything. You know, you have to go into your closet. Sometimes you have to get out from around people. Whatever, you know, cause, but because Satan will use people to tempt you. Come on, let's go to lunch today. I'll buy it. Nah, 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 not today. You know, and sometimes you just have to tell them, plan. In other words, I'm trying to overcome. I set, you know, I, I set a goal. I want to achieve my goal by the help of the Lord. So, not today. But Satan will tempt us, Satan. All day, any day, every day. Because that's his job. But we have to be on our job. But again, man shall not, he said, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. There's many times, sometimes you go to nursing homes or hospitals and you see people, they're laying up there. And I always said, you know, if a person stop eating for a long period of time, that they're going to soon perish. Because I know that the body cannot survive unless the Lord intervenes and keep it alive, but they're going to wipe and they're going to slowly die. So even if they're eating a little something, I, I, I'm glad to see them do that because I know the body needs that to gain strength. But it's the Lord that gives all of us strength. Verse 5. Then the devil taking them up into the holy city and set it them on a pinnacle, set it them on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. You know, the pinnacle is something that's real high. Now he want him to just throw himself down, so to speak. But it is written. See how the devil come and more or less rehearse words back to him. In other words. Don't think that the devil don't know God's word. Sometimes we don't know the word like we should, but the devil, he more certainly knows God's word. He knows it better than we think he does. Remember how he told Eve? You won't surely die. God do know the day that you eat that up. You're going you're gonna to die, but you won't surely die. But he knew those things. But again, the devil knows God's word saying. Verse 5 again, then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and set them on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. In other words, Satan knew that if you fall, if you don't go against God, that God is going to allow his angels to come and help us. That's basically what he was rehearsing to Jesus. Saints, if we don't, just like the song I say, if I do like my brother say do, everything will be all right. If we do like God say, everything will be all right. No matter how much Satan is going to try us and tempt us, if we do like God saved do, everything still going to be all right. That's why we have to strive from our heart, our mind, soul, and body with all the strength that we have to strive to do the will of God. Don't let nobody, family, friends, sister, brother, your enemy, nobody, turn you around. Don't let them stop you from doing the will of God. Sometimes in life, your own family members can be a hindrance to you. Remember Jesus, when, when Peter came to him, Jesus told him, say, thou art offense unto me, get behind me, Satan. In other words, sometimes you have to literally tell your own family member or somebody so close, your dear, your closest, I just say, your dearest friend, get behind me. You have to recognize that spirit that's trying to work in that individual. The Bible says like this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual, but against principality, spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of times, the spirit works in an individual. It's not, in other words, you're not rebuking that person. 
if you can understand it. You're rebuking that spirit that's in that person. In other words, you have to be able to see that demon, that demonic spirit that's trying to, that's trying to hinder you. No matter who it comes through. Sometimes it can come through brothers and sisters because the Bible says like this. To whom you yield yourself servants to obey. His servant you are to whom you obey. Amen. Have not we all been used by the devil at some time, some point in time, whether we have the Holy Ghost or don't have the Holy Ghost. Satan still have, have used us. But at the same time, once we recognize that Satan is using us, then we we, we start to reject Satan. I'm not going to get behind me and say, I'm not going to let you use me like that. Mm-hmm. You know? But Satan will use you if you allow him to. But you got to recognize, that's what the Bible says about this. The Bible says, try the spirits. Yeah. See whether they be of God. Every spirit is not of God. Mm-hmm. There are some spirits out here that's of Satan. Yeah. And you'll think you're doing the will of God. And it's Satan that's causing you to do those things. Mm-hmm. Look back at look back at Saul, Paul, how that he was going around killing the saints of God. He thought he was doing God's will until he found out that he was working against God. But he did it out of ignorance. It wasn't his heart, his his heart and mind desire just to kill up the people of God. He thought he was doing God's will. That's why God was able to change him. Paul Paul had a good heart, saying. How about us? He had a good heart. Verse 6 again. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. In other words, the Bible says like this, it's hard to kick against the prick. It's hard to kick against God's word, saints. All we got to do, no matter how hard, the, no matter how hard the word may seem, as though it's coming to us, humble down to the word of God. It, it'll benefit us, every one of you, and me, and me especially. You know, I don't want to say this to you all, but it's, it's, it's to me also. I mean, you know, because they, they get times the where sometimes you know the word come and you know you kind of get a little hard, but at the same time you got to soften yourself up and let the word. Just have this free course in our life. We'll find ourselves being blessed. You know, I thank God for, you know, all of our testimony. Because all of us had a testimony to the point when we first known about this way. Nobody, nobody wanted to walk in this way. But by and by, <coughs> as we as we as we kept on coming around, God was able to soften our hearts up. Allow us to come in and hear the word of God. You know, it ain't so bad as it, as we thought it was. It's actually a lot better for us than we really had. We couldn't even see this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we look back and say, I, I wish I had done it a long time ago. Yeah. But God got his own set time. His own set time, saying. At that time, he wasn't ready. It's kind of like, you know, we talk about, you know, as, as, as even the scripture how God talked about, he sent men out, you know, to, to, there were fishermen. But he sent him out to fish men, to catch men. Every man is not ready at, at a certain time. Sometimes us brothers may go fishing, but we, we don't catch nothing every time. But there are certain times, there are certain seasons to where the fish almost, you know, it's almost, as some say, it's almost like they want to jump on the bank, so to speak. You catch them in, in, in abundance. But that's because they're ready, they're biting. Sometimes men are not, you know, they're not ready to, to receive the word of God. Women too, but at the same time, in due time, God knows how to get his people. All we got to do is keep fishing, keep throwing out there, keep throwing the word of God. One day they'll get a hold of it. Verse 7 Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Sometimes Satan uh, allow us to just because we know to where hey if, 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 if I if I do this God God he'll pick me up Satan we shouldn't be trying God like that. There's a difference between you know you fail you wasn't trying to fall but you failed you did something that you had no business and you failed then you deliberately you going out there and doing something to where God forgive me. We all have said that sometimes. God will forgive me. 
but saying we don't want to keep doing things like that. In other words, we don't want to tempt God like that. Though God can forgive you, and he might, as they say, he might forgive you, but there's, there's a chance of where he might not forgive you. So we don't want to just be, as the Bible says, sinning willfully. Verse 7 again. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil takes them up into an exceeding high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship. One thing about a kingdom, every kingdom has its own glory. Just like, you know, we may say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use stores. J.C. Penney may have a bunch of dresses so for, for the women. They may have a bunch of suits for the men. You may go to Sears. In other words, I'm, 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 I'm establishing this as various kingdoms. One store may have something to where they can glory in. Another store may have something to where they can glory in. Walmart may have something to where they can glory in. If I go back too far, y'all might not know more. Go mark. Some of y'all, well, I know some of y'all wouldn't even want when go mark was around, but that was another mark. Kmart, Walmart, Mark's been around. JM Field. But when you look at kingdom, every kingdom has a glory. Just like you look at every every state, so to speak. United States, they got they got glory. You know, you go to you go to Russia, they may have glory. China, they may have the glory. But Satan was trying to show Jesus to the point to where if you fall down and you just worship me, you know, I give you all of these kingdoms and the glory of them. In other words, all of these things, Satan, there's a lot of things we see sometimes in life to where if Satan, Satan can, can, can try us, he can give us these things. And then we don't realize that Satan giving us all of these things. It's not, the Bible says it like this, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Everything that we see, we receive down here is not always from God. Yeah. Let me say it again. Everything that we always receive down here in this land is not always from God. Something Satan give us. Satan can give us things to where we won't stay focused in on God. And we'll say, this God blessing me. Oh, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, blessed, blessed. But sometimes it's Satan. Verse 8 again. Again, the devil takes them up into an, an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Sometimes we get so much things in life to where sometimes we don't have time for God. But we'll say, God is really blessing me. God, I don't, I don't believe God will bless us so much with tangible things to where we don't have time to serve him. Amen. Sometimes we have to examine our, our so-called blessing. Sometimes we do say. It, it's, it's good, you know, there, there was times where, you know, I had jobs to where, you know, I couldn't be in service a lot of times. Sometimes I didn't really always want to be in service, but then there was times where I wanted to be in service. And sometimes my job wouldn't allow me to do it. But then, by and by, because you know you have a heart, you have a mind, you say, well, you know what? If I do this, if I get this type of job, then I can, I can, put my, I can allow myself to be in service. And that's why you know, I really try to, I, I try to be in service as much as I can, because I know one day, as we get older, you know, Sometimes your body won't allow you to go. You want to go in your mind, but your body won't allow you to go. So it's like, you know, the song says, you know, put your time in while you have a chance. You know, because sometimes, you know, we just can't go. You know, and, and I've seen people that they want to come to service, but their body won't allow them to come. So, you know, saying it's a privilege to be in the house of Christ. It's a privilege to... Be amongst, you know, one another, you know, to behold your faces, to hear your song, to hear my song, to hear your testimony, to hear my testimony, just to be amongst 
you know, saints, you know, it, it, it's a blessing. You know, we're not here to fight. We're not here to, you know, just hold on and see what's going to happen. No, we're here to enjoy ourselves in the Lord. Yeah. If God wants to take all of us right now, take us all up, up, up to heaven, you know, just like we're here and we're getting along, we'll go to heaven. God, God is pleased with these things. And that's why we, we want to come and hear the word of God because it encourages our heart to keep on living yes. home. Keep on, keep on standing on God's foundation. Keep living the life, you know. And you want, you know, as I say, you want others that's out into the world. You want them to be saved too. But, you know, they have to grasp this thing for themselves. He that has, the Bible says right there, he that has it, it, let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. If we're supposed to be the church, we gotta listen to what the Word is saying. If, there's, if they want to be a part of the church, they gotta listen to what the Word is saying. We were oftentimes heard, and it's true, the church resides in us. It's not these four walls. So we, we're here to be saved. Amen. That's our number one goal. Amen. Brother was reading a scripture the other day. I talked to about that, you know, uh, uh, one went out to, to hire laborers for the vineyard. He went out at various hours. He found some. He told them, you know, to go to work. You know, and they went to work. He go out later on, he found more at a different hour. They were idle. You know, sometimes in life, there were a whole lot of idle, idle. People just idle. They, they're not serving God. They're just there. Yeah. But we have to come to work. Yeah. Come into the house of God. You know, when we clap in our hands, when we're praising God and giving God thanks, Glorifying God with the lifestyle that we live to the point that we're pleasing Him, we're working for the Lord. Yeah. We're working for our King. Yes, sir. So that's why I'm encouraging us. Keep on working. Keep on, keep on, as they say, keep on being on our job, Satan. Satan don't come, but keep on being on our job. Encourage one another. You see a brother that, that's slacking or a sister that's slacking, whatever, encourage them in the way of righteousness. You know, we supposed to edify one another. When you find one, I mean, in other words, who in here, by showing your hand, who in here do not need no encouragement, no time since they've been in the church? That must be in here. I say, who in here do not need encouragement since they've been in the church? In other words, we have to encourage one another. I need encouragement. You need encouragement. Pastor needs encouragement. Everybody needs encouragement. Sometimes you can encourage one. They, they could be singing a song. Sister, you sung that song so well. That's encouragement to them. That'll make them want to what? Keep on singing. You find, as they say, the young ones, they sing songs. Y'all keep on singing. And by the way, y'all sound good. Y'all keep on singing. Keep on praising God. You know? I just... I saw this on, and I'm kind of going off into something else, but I saw this on the obituary the other day. It was a 15-year-old girl, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize, but I heard, you know, you, you heard about a shooting. I think that was in Joe Lewis. I think, yeah. come to find out, I think her brother, yeah. some kind of way, they were doing something with a gun playing or whatever, and they shot, he shot and killed his sister. Yeah. You know, who's to say that your life has to be spared? We're only here by the grace of God, all of us. Amen. Those that are older, we can look back. I can look back on my life and, 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 saw, and see many times that I shouldn't have been here, but it's because of the grace of God. Amen. You know, I always think, you know, think about you know being up under a car one time, working on it, and the car fell on me. You know, thank God that. Whatever, I, I forgot what it was, but something was there to keep it from falling completely on me. You know, I remember putting a, a, a shotgun shell in a twig in, in, in a branch, taking my BB gun, you know, I always wanted to try to shoot it, shoot that little, it's got a little dot back there, and I shot it. After a while, that thing said, boom. You know, I don't know if y'all ever watch uh, cartoons, I, the Road Runner thing or whatever, when something happened to me, you're just sitting up there like, Bleep. That's the way I felt like. But 
Come and find out the back of the shell blowed out, and I picked up the shell in the front with the BBs and bullets, as we call them. They didn't go nowhere. But I, I say all of that because I say that could have been my life. Yeah. Then, then in an automobile accident, you. You know, those things could have been my life. Yeah, I remember, and no thing just because we are the church. Because I remember one time we were going to, I think, Mississippi one time on the church van. And the brother got sleepy. I was sleepy too. And I've been driving sleepy. Matter of fact, that particular night, I think, or that particular trip, I, I remember driving sleepy. So, Saint, it takes God to keep on. Sometimes it can be, it can be little small things. Give God praise. Amen. Give God praise for the least little thing. Thank you, Lord. You know, because he, he's most certainly worth it. Yes, he is. You know, a lot of people are, as they say, they're gone. They don't have, they don't have the chance that we have. You know, but I, I, I saw in the paper a little 15 year old girl, and I, you know, I didn't realize who it was, but until someone, I someone told me today, and I was like, I remember seeing her. You know, because when, I'm like this. When I see little kids or infants or whatever, it's not an infant, but she was a 15 year old. When I see people like that, you know, always in my mind, I always like, you know, if you're curious, I wonder what happened. But now I got my answer. But things like that happen, same children. It happens. Yeah. So when mom and daddy tell you something to do that's right, always try to obey those things. When they say be a place. You know, always be those places. I remember one time, and I'm saying this to help the children. I remember one time I was at Wendy's on one North Monroe, and a lady came in there. And well, actually, there were some kids that came in there. And then, then the lady came, come to find out the lady was the mother of one of the, the, the little girls that was there. And she ratted in on her. She really got on her to her. Because her daughter was not there. Her mother really chewed in on her heart. And sometimes someone say, well, I, I wish she had did that somewhere else. But you know what? Children, when you become disobedient, you don't be, and you don't do like your parents say do, your parents have every right to chastise you wherever they can find you. Because sometimes, sometimes they cannot find you. Sometimes somebody else can get a hold of you. That's why when your parents tell you, Stay right here, no matter what, stay there. Yeah. Stay there. Mm -hmm. If somebody got to come in and call your parent, before you move, you stay there. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that can be your life. Mm -hmm. There's men that pick up little boys, little girls, mm -hmm. young ladies, old ladies. Amen. That's right. And then they take them and kill them. Mm -hmm. So, just like y'all sung that song, Jesus, be a fence all around me. Jesus, be your friend.